Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Dollars Mono and also Dollars Mots, which are two different types of motion capture utilities you can use in your animations. Dollars Mono uses a sync webcam to try and capture both body and facial movements. We'll go through some different scenarios there. And then Dollars Mots is a very interesting idea where you just type in what you want the animation to be. So if I type in, say, waving, it's going to use its database to try and figure out what that should look like. Or if we go ahead and say, squatting and squatting. So really, really cool stuff. We'll go through a lot of different examples here. I'm going to be taking a look at these two pieces of software today. All right, so I have Dollars Mono open up here and let's go ahead and take a look at some of the options we have. So first off, you can see we have our camera sort. If I click on this guy, it's just going to give us a drop down. I also have, this is a the Razer Keo right here. Also in the source, we have camera, which I'm using right now, but you can also do a video file, which is a really nice option so you can record and then go ahead and process it after the fact. All right, so you can see I don't have too much room in my eyes, but enough for regular movements. You're gonna see the brows enough because I wanted to leave enough room for the face to where it's actually gonna be able to track as much detail as possible. Because you imagine if I'm further away, the amount of pixels in my eyes usually would be are gonna start getting less and less pixels. And I'm assuming that's gonna go along with accuracy and how much it can actually track. You can see my feet here are freaking out. It looks like I'm doing a little dance even though I'm, I'm not moving. It's trying to track the feet, but the important thing here is you can see I'm in my just upper body mode. So it's made for something like this where you're actually sitting at a table or something like that. If I was to go ahead and switch to jumping mode, <laughs> Looks like I'm uh, doing my best Peter Pan right now, flying in the sky a little bit. Uh, that's if you were doing full body and actually wanted to jump and be able to see you physically jumping off the floor. Otherwise, you have it on floor mode to where the feet can't leave the contact of the ground, uh, but it allows you to do some other things like stepping forward and back in space. And this is on their documentation. So from here, you can see this is the face tracking icon, and we can see that the face is tracking over here. And you can see if I enunciate my face motions a little bit more, you see more of the animation going through. And I think that's just more amount of pixels it has to track with. If I turn that off, you can see we don't have that stuff anymore. It's just doing the body motion capture. So it's nice you have the option for both. This is our calibration button. So this is kind of giving you the zero reference pose. And I might need to reach out to the company and double check and make sure. Because they were saying having your hands at your sides is how you want to do it, your calibration. But since I'm at a desk, I don't know if that pose calibration would be on the table or I try and put him at my sides, you know, things like that. So I might try it at my sides really quick. All right, there we go. So now this should kind of zero everything out to where it should be a little bit more accurate. And by the way, the camera is angled down a little bit like this diagonally down. And that's because if this was straight on and I had my hands on the tabletop or anything like that. If you look at something straight on like this, you can see it's having a hard time tracking my hand because it doesn't have anything to grab onto. Whereas if I have it down here, there's a lot more. So just kind of things to keep in mind. Again, they talk about this in the documentation, uh, but based on how you're moving and how you're planning on posing and stuff, you might need to adjust those things. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at our settings menu. I haven't changed too much here. I did uh, enable iClone streaming, so we're going to be jumping in there in just a little bit. Sensitivity, I don't want to have it average out and, and lose too much of the individual movement. But if I have either the sensitivity turned up all the way or the tolerance turned all the way up to high, I get a little bit too much jittering. So let's go ahead and turn everything back up to where it was before. And you can see, even though my hands are pretty steady right now, just a slight fluctuation in the video movement is moving around the hands. And the facial capture, it, it doesn't seem like it flickers around too much, so I'm going to leave that on fully sensitive, so it's going to have all the information. So to actually connect it to the Dollars MoCap, you need to go up to Plugins, Sunnyview Tech, and then Dollars MoCap. And this installation is super, super easy. You just download the zip file from their site. You drop in literally one folder into your iClone destination folder, and then everything works from there. So it's really, really simple install. And you can see it is looking for an avatar, so I want to make sure to have that. I'll click on connect. And true, it is connected to dollars mocap. So iClone over here is now connected to dollars mocap. And you can see I have a preview mode or I have a record mode. And we can toggle face capture on or off and adjust the overall sensitivity of everything as well. Go ahead and set this on preview mode. So I'll leave this up here so we can see. And this is the important thing though. If you want to preview or record, you need to do it from this panel, not actually inside of iClone. It did cause me some, uh, cause me some problems when I didn't do that. So I'm going to go ahead, just leave it on preview for now. I'm going to click on start. 
and we can kind of see that it's trying to process that this real time. So we have our guy here. I have it set on record. I'll go and click on start. And here we go. We're recording using the plugin. We'll see if the hand, so two, three, four, five, and we'll go ahead and see how this looks back in motion. By the way, I had this on quick mode just so it, the processing for the GPU wouldn't be a factor. I'll go and put this back up on high just so we get a better look here. And you can see on the motion layer, it's already done the puppet clip. We'll go ahead and bring down the timeline a little bit so we get a better view. We'll go ahead and play this back. And we can see that this is doing a pretty darn good job. So two, three, four, five, right, was what I was saying. The only downside here is you can see that we are not getting the audio passed through to iClone. And this is, again, this is a motion capture plugin, so it's not completely expected. And of course, this, this plugin isn't intended just to be used with iClone. It's meant to be used in other software as well. But it would be great if we could pipe in the audio. I'm going to go ahead and in a separate example, we're going to talk about how we can get the audio in there. But it's a little bit more of a hack job in order to get it in there, but it works and it, and it works pretty well. And you can also use the Aculips to make the mouth movements even more precise. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other modes available to us. And then also we'll see some of the full body motion capture inside of iClone as results as well. So I've just been using the upper body as if you're sitting at a table or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click to change. And I'm not going to do the jumping or crouching examples quite yet. We'll do that in a second. But I'm just going to go ahead and do the regular full body mode where you don't lose contact with the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and calibrate. I'm going to move back pretty quickly. Try and do... Or zero pose. And this software doesn't want it out like this. It just wants it down by your sides, but you can see it did reset and looking pretty darn good. And the cool thing is, is we still have individual fingers, one, two, three, four. And then we also can still have the face motion capture as well. I wouldn't call this great for face motion capture because you can see when there's mo more pixels for it to track, it does a little bit better job of recognizing the mouth movements. If I'm all the way back here, there's really not that many pixels for it to track at that point. And so it's not going to be as accurate. All right, so let's go ahead and hop in iClone and see what the full body motion capture results would be like. So we have our guy right here. I put it back in quick mode just for the sake of uh, real time performance. We can turn the quality, of course, back up afterwards. And uh, with that plugin open, again, that's up in plugins, Sunnyview Tech and Dollars Mocap, it'll open this guy up. It has detected that there is an avatar here. So go and click on connect. And I'm going to go ahead and go straight to record. We could, of course, preview as well. I think just for this, I'm not going to do face capture. I don't think that's really necessary. I don't think it's going to be able to track it that well from that far away. And in fact, I'm going to go and turn it off in here as well. And maybe that'll save us a little bit of processing. So with that being the case, I'm going to go ahead and click on record in a second. And then we'll go ahead and get to it. So record. Go and step back. And ideally, we might do our calibration again. But again, you can kind of see that we're doing a good job of, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So all the individual fingers are registering. And then, of course, we have the full range of movement that we can do as far as, uh, you know, moving around. But now if I go back to the beginning and we'll go ahead and turn back up our quality to high. For the most part, and with barely any effort on our part, we have full body motion capture. Again, the, the ground contacts, I think, are off a little bit. Their deep version that uses a depth sensor would probably do a little bit better, but especially if you know we were doing something akin to this, that looks pretty darn good. So right now, remember I'm on this guy right here. If I stand back, if I try and jump, all right, well, it kind of registers the motions I'm going through with my, my upper body, but it's not actually breaking contact with the ground. And also if I try and squat or something like that, you can see my feet are actually coming up to my body instead of the, the other way around of my body going down towards the ground. So that's when we want to use the other mode we have right here, which is where we can break contact with the ground. This is very similar to regular motion capture suits as well. There's usually an option for this, at least in the ones that I've used. So now if I go ahead and jump, we can see that is registering, including all the secondary animation when we come back down, which is really cool. And then if we do squat, 
we can see it is doing it in a much more natural and correct way. All right, so I did talk a little bit about the hack we can do to try and get the audio inside of iClone. And just so you can see, I am recording this uh, in OBS. This is where I do my screen captures, but also I'm going to use this as my makeshift audio file that I can then import into iClone and use Aculips with. So I have the guy open up. It's just set to quick mode right now. So we're going to get a little bit more real time performance. Go up to plugins, Sunnyview Tech, dollars mocap. I'll make sure to connect. And it's going to connect to this avatar up here. I'm going to go and click on record. And again, remember I'm recording to OBS as well. I'm going to pull the audio from that a little bit later on. So I'm going to go and click on start. And here we can see this is working. So we'll go and do five, four, three, two, one. Hey, and uh, you know, happy new year or whatever. So there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and click on cancel here. And the mouth movements are pretty darn good. You can see what numbers I'm kind of mouthing there, but we just don't have the audio. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick conversion of this clip into the OBS file into a WAV file, and then I'm going to import that in the next step into iClone. All right, so in iClone, I went ahead and just put the quality back up to high. This is still just the same animation right now. There's no audio. We want to go and get that trimmed audio in there. So I'm going to go up to, with our character selected, I'm going to go up to animation, create script, and we're going to use Aculips. And Aculips is iClone's newest version of trying to take a audio file and turn it into text that helps the pronunciation be more accurate on the lips. So with this opened up, I'm going to say I want to open up a audio file. And I'll go ahead and navigate to where my audio file is at. And this is the trimmed version right here. And if I go and click on generate text, it's going to try and parse the audio file and figure out what I'm saying. All right, so we can see once it's done processing, it tried to convert it and it messed up a little bit, but we can go ahead and correct it as we're going through. So I'll go ahead and click on play. Let's say this is, and here we can see. And with that corrected, let's go ahead and click on align again and see if it can line things up. There we go. So this is done. And now that we have the words done here, we're just going to make sure it's accurate. And here we can see this is working. So we'll go ahead and do five. All right, so that did a good job. I'm going to go ahead and click on apply. And now we can see if we scroll down here, it's assigned all kinds of visim shapes, which is the mouth movements according to the words at the correct spots, which is pretty crazy that it did that automatically on its own. The only downside is this is not necessarily lined up with our motion capture data. So the visim track, which is for our voice, I'm gonna drag this off right now. And the only downside of this is you have to try and manually line these things up. Well, we'll try and line it up by five. So here's five, five, yeah, so we'll just go ahead and mark this guy as a spot. And by the way, one way we can do that in here is we make sure the project window is open here. And with project selected, we have this little flag button. I didn't know this was here for the longest time, but it's kind of like a markers in After Effects. So if I go and say this is five, I'll go and click on apply. And we have a little marker here that lets us know this is where five was happening. So now and let's see what it looks like without it. So first we don't have any audio. Five. So we have five, four, three. So we can tell what he's saying. We just don't have the audio and we don't have the, the extra uh, pronunciation that probably would be helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this spot, roughly speaking, line this guy up. And if we go ahead and play this and back, you can see this is working. So we'll go ahead and do five, four, three, two, one. Hey, and, uh, you know, Happy New Year or whatever. So, there so that might not be perfectly lined up yet, but you can see how well that's working. And we're not having to strap any head rig to ourselves for a, a helmet motion capture. We don't have to wear a suit. This is all just capturing live, which is awesome. And all right, so we can see this works really well. It is a little bit of an extra step, but having the audio in there, if you're doing face motion capture is obviously really important. All right, so I have Dollars Mons loaded up here and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, but let's just go through some examples and have some fun seeing what this thing can do. So the default one it has is Jumping Jack. That's already in there when you open up the program. Let's go and click on Send and let's see the result that we get. Pretty darn cool. Powering in fear or something like that. Oh, cool. Uh, falling down. Just to say drunk and see if they get the little... Very cool, cool. To say taking a photo... And try spinning in circles. 
sit. Standing up. Laying down to sleep. <laughs> Not. Running in circles. Cartwheels. It's pretty darn good. Well, the cool thing here is all we need to do is click on this button here and it's going to record the motion to a BVH file and then we can import it wherever we want. So if I go ahead and click on stop, it says BVH saved. If I go and go to the folder that's installed in, I go to the front end, I can see that it has a BVH file that we just saved out. And the cool thing is we can kind of string these things together so we can go jumping jacks that we want the person to be scared. So doing jumping jacks and like, oh my gosh, oh, I'm scared. Oh, falling down. Ugh. <laughs> and you can string these things together as you're recording and then they will be available to you in your animation software of choice. So this is really, really cool. So we can have a guy that's feeling drunk. Oh, I don't feel so down. Oh God, I'm so scared. Oh, never mind. Oh, good dish. We have waving to the camera. Oh, yes, yes. Look at me. Look at me. Oh, wait, let me take a picture of you. Oh, look at that. And then we're going to go ahead and you know what? I'm so happy. I'm going to spin in circles. But you know what? Then I need to sit down because I'm too excited. And then after that, I'm too tired and I just need to lay down and go to sleep. But after that, oh my gosh, I'm shocked. And at the end of all that, I want to fight you. <laughs> So after spending some time with these pieces of software, you know, what do I think? Are these going to completely replace hardware-based motion capture solutions? And is this the wave of the future? Well, it's not going to completely remove those things, but it does lower the ceiling as far as how much it costs and how difficult the setup is in using this. I've been talking to their company heads a little bit, and the big thing they're trying to set out to do is to have this be easily accessible and easy to set up. And I think they're perfectly on the money here because aside from a web camera or any type of camera that you're going to record yourself with either live or as a video file, you can feed into this software and get the motion capture results back. Now, of course, there's probably some limitations and setup concerns like the angle, like we talked about. And then also since it's video based, the lighting, but these things are much, much simpler than for instance, if you saw the AccuFace video I did where I had a head mounted camera, that gets to be pretty heavy on your neck and you have it suspended right in front of your face. So you're trying to look past it and act as if it's not there and act in a meaningful way when that's really distracting, especially if you're doing take after take, it starts to actually wear on you. Same thing goes for a motion capture suit. Modern day motion capture suits are pretty darn light and efficient, but at the same time, you're going to have a, either be wearing a full zip up suit or you're going to have sensors attached to every major joint and knuckle if you're doing hand movements so you get all the different joint rotations and that starts to be a distraction as well because you're trying to act like these things aren't there but you really have all this stuff on you so when you combine the two together you have very powerful solutions but you're talking about thousands of dollars and you're also talking about some cumbersome setups whereas here you set up the camera or record the video however you want to you take it into the software and then you can process it and get face and body motion capture without having a single thing attached to you and that's a really really cool thing when it comes to dollar mots i think that's just one of the coolest things to come about in a while because it gives you plenty of opportunities to get quick motion capture that might not be quite as perfectly real world accurate as you'd get if you did full on motion capture by yourself. But say you have some background characters that just need to look like they're idling or having conversations or waving or whatever like that. And it's not right up in your face in the camera. These things will work perfectly. It's a subscription model, which I'm usually not a fan of, but at the same time, it's so affordably priced that it becomes a very, very powerful solution to get things done very quickly. And then you can always go into a program like Dollars Mono and do more refined takes if you feel they're needed for your scenario. Even though I've barely scratched the surface with this software, I've had a great time looking at it and I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how they're going to improve this as time goes along because I can see this being useful to a huge amount of people in their animation endeavors. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.